people would pay to get to do what I get to make a living doing. Yeah. Hi, welcome to Over 50 TV. My name is Lou Reyes. I'm your host. And today I am with legendary Hall of Fame broadcaster Mark Bunch Bishop. And we're in his studio here in Cleveland, Ohio. Hi, Munch. How are you, man? Good, Good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. Glad you're here. Thank Today, golly I just squeaked in to be on over 50, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you just barely made it. Just barely made it. But I'm really glad that we got together today because what I want you to do, Marcus, I want to talk about a career in sports broadcasting. Uh, part of the mission of Over 50 TV is to provide business and career advice to people. Mm -hmm. Sports broadcasting is something that I've always been fond of and always thought maybe when I was driving my car, I thought, boy, I'd love to get into it. And I thought, why not share this dream or this possibility with our audience? So if you could, Mark, just tell us a little bit how you actually how you got into sports broadcasting. Okay, now remember, as I tell you this, do as I say, not as I did, okay? Okay. Well, I have always you know, had other aspirations, other dreams. I actually wanted to be a college professor. Oh my God! And criminology and sociology, which was my major at Ohio State, yeah. had a minor in broadcast journalism and communications, and uh, went to grad school for my master's in criminology and sociology. You went to Ohio State broadcast, yeah, which was the next step, and then decided that I wanted to go to law school. Mm -hmm. So you're talking to folks at school, and, and if you ever know, people like when you go to different schools when everything is said and done. Yeah. So I, big Buckeye honk, you know that. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Be all end all, honestly, yeah. but. They said, go to a different school. So I applied, and I was going to law school at Capital University, mm -hmm. working downtown in uh, Columbus at a bar deli yeah. in between classes, this and that, and it was just a couple months. Now, how long ago was this? This was 1979. Wow, okay. Right, 1979. And folks from a brand-new radio station that's still in Columbus today, QFM mm -hmm. 96, they would come in, lunchtime, have a sandwich, have a, have a soda, yeah. come in after work, have a beer, sure. sandwich, and then take off and leave. I would help wait on him, cash him out, whatever it took. It was kind of like, whatever you need to do, I will do. Yeah, yeah. And out of the clear of the sky one day, one of the guys said to me, and I do have to shout him out, his name is Tom Tuber, recently retired. He was my first boss in radio. Wow. He said, wow, you know a lot about sports. I like your delivery. Your voice, he liked your voice. Then. Well, he just liked the way, by passion, I talked about sports. Yeah. And, you know, you're a bartender. You're a... You know, you're mad. You're you're a psychologist. You're a psychiatrist. Yeah. You're a big pro, You yeah. know, you're everything. Yeah. And I said, "Oh, well, that's very, very cool. Just make sure you tip me." You know what mm -hmm. I mean, kind of thing. And out of the clear blue sky, he said, "How'd you like to come over, meet our morning guy? I need." It was a brand new rock station at the sure. time in town. We got a couple years old. I need a regular sports guy, but I want a guy that, you know, doesn't sit there and go. And last night, the Indians upended the White Sox, four to two. <laughs> Orioles flew over the, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. And I said, okay. So I met a guy. In fact, it's his birthday today, John Fisher, who's out in Seattle now doing radio. Not too many of us around still from when I started. And um, we hit it off. They had me do some demos, quote mm -hmm. unquote. They put me on the air, and boom, that was it. How old were you when, when you found your This dad? was, um, well, I was uh, seven years old. See, I was a child prodigy. Only kidding. <laughs> I, I was 27 yeah. at the time. Oh, wow. And bingo, here I am today. That's a big decision to make, though. That's oh, was a huge it? decision to make, to I, leave your path going to me, law school. I took a deep breath with yeah. it. Uh, one of the most interesting phone calls was calling the parents. Mm -hmm. Said, hey, I'm going to you know, finish up finish up this year of law school and then start working. Oh, great. Where? What firm? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> doing sports on rock and roll radio. And it hasn't stopped since then. So what they say when you tell them that? Oh, are you crazy? And I said, well, of course I am. And I, and I tout that on a daily basis. I'm crazy, <laughs> but not stupid. So, so let's jump forward a little mm -hmm. bit. So, so now today, let's talk about what you're, you're today, what you're doing today, as the Hall of Fame broadcaster, sports broadcaster. Okay. Well, I'm honored and blessed to be on, which I consider to be a bucket list radio station. Mm -hmm. People would probably pay to be on. Yeah. On uh, WTM 1100, mm -hmm. doing uh, filling in on mornings when legendary Mike Snyder takes a leave, of, goes on vacation or whatever it may be, yeah. needs a day off. Also, I do a lot of pre and post game Indian shows. Mm 
Yeah, I hear you all the time. We do uh, a Browns pre games on Sunday mm -hmm. and uh, Cavaliers pre post games on occasion too. They also have my Montana Ohio Sports Network, mm -hmm. whereas my one boss calls it the Montana Ohio Sports Empire. <laughs> and uh, it's over about a third of the state of Ohio. So, how much time uh, in, in terms of your, your regular day or week, how much time are you, are you on air? How often are you on air, I guess? Oh my gosh, well, minimum of 15 hours with my afternoon show, 3 to 6. Yeah. So say, you talk to about another 10, it's about 25. And what's the biggest reward that you find being on sports radio? I enjoy talking sports. Mm -hmm. When you talk to sports fanatics, mm -hmm. people, a lot of people would pay to get to do what I get to make a living doing yeah. And it's just, you know, it's it's the toy department of life, like Ray Casey Coleman <laughs> called it that. The toy department and of life? And it should be the toy department of life. Now, yeah, yeah. if you hear some callers or social media people, they don't mm -hmm. look at it that way. It's not like, it shouldn't be life or death. Well, sports yeah. fans are passionate, we know that. They can be angry, they can be sad, they can be happy, ecstatic, and you know, everything in between. Angry, Lou. I had people call me with the, filled with... Uh, you know, vitriol mm -hmm. when the Indians had a rain delay a week ago Saturday. <laughs> so, in terms of the people that you've met, you know, sports guys, you know, athletes, you know, <laughs> is there a memory? Is there someone that you can say, God, Lou, this was, this person really impressed me, or this was the most exciting moment of my sports career? Do you know what's funny is that some of the bigger names are actually, once you get to them, mm -hmm. a little more humble, a little more accessible. Yeah. You know, being like on the you know, batting practice for Cleveland, you know, at the Indians games. Mm -hmm. When the Cubs came through one time, I mean, Sammy Sosa was a gas. LeBron was a gas. Mm -hmm. If you saw, if you took the time to go to his charity events, be a part of him, this and that, yeah. he was appreciative. Tell you what, you can say, was well, this sports related? It is because he loves baseball movies. Yeah. One of the coolest guys I ever talked to, Kevin Costner. Kevin Costner, the actor? <laughs> yeah. And it was funny because once the conversation started flowing, we talked Field of Dreams, we mm -hmm. talked Love of the Game, talked baseball movies and wow. that. And um, he was so accessible, so mm -hmm. just down to earth. He, one of the best stories ever, he said that he threw away the Field of Dream script three, four times. Wow. And so he just said, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> and he said, these guys are coming back out of a cornfield. Who the heck is going <laughs> to, you know, hearing voices, you'll yeah. build that they will come. And he said, please just read it one more time. And he said he read it one more time. He said, you know what hooked me? And I said, a bitch, it's a scene that makes me cry. You know, it's in the movie. Hmm. When Kevin looks at his dad, says, "Hey, Dad, have a catch." Yeah, you know, because yeah. you movie. like baseball and you're yeah. fortunate to have a dad. You know, a father is that. Um, you know, that was a staple of my youth. Wow, playing catch with my dad. So yeah. you know, things like that. Um, so many of the sports guys are, are very, very cool. Jim Tressel, now president of Youngstown State, yeah, just had. And again, I'm not a name dropper. It's, I, I think people feel bad well, for me. That's why they invite me. Is that I had coffee with him a couple of weeks ago. And when he was coaching Ohio State, he won a national championship. I praised him for that. However, we went out at a, at a, a few times locked horns. But it was always respectful because he's one heck of a human being. Let me change the subject and flip it a little bit here. You're, you talked about uh, Butch Davis, and he had a lot of responsibilities. Now, I know that in, in sports broadcasting, in, in radio today, Many, many uh, sportscasters have more responsibilities than they did, let's just say, 10, 15, 20 years ago. Okay. How do you see the, the sports world, the sports casting world evolve? Well, you know, when you say, you know, others, I'll, I'll take a dear friend of mine, Nick Camino, mm -hmm. who does uh, Channel 3 in Cleveland, WKYC. Uh, okay. The anchor sports on the weekend as a reporter during the week. Mm -hmm. Well, you'll see him around these halls, too. He still does radio shows. Oh, wow. You do what you need to do. I know people that still write columns. You know, it's like, we need you to write a blog. We need mm -hmm. you to write this. We need you to be on this, this, and that. On down the line. Mm -hmm. So there's so much crossover, mm -hmm. you know, between the mediums. I, I would say the, the, the written words were secondary, but you see a lot of guys on radio doing TV and vice versa. So let me answer, though. What, for somebody out here in our audience, mm -hmm. you know, the over 50 TV uh, viewer, somebody who's over 50 and they're thinking about their job and they don't like it, they're bored, they, they don't feel fulfilled. Is sports radio, is sports radio something, something that they should consider or could reasonably consider at an, an older age, at a, a over 50? Well, you know what, age withstanding, I would say no, and here's why. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to absolutely start at the very bottom. Mm -hmm. In fact, I would suggest, you say, what to talk? 
I would suggest going back to college and getting a broadcast journalism or communications degree. Mm-hmm. Even though, you know, even if you keep your job and start working part time, yeah, I would, say, and then you're going to have to start at the very bottom of the rung. Mm-hmm. You may have to start producing a show for somebody. You may have to start, uh, you know, answering calls. Yeah. Isn't that? That's why someone that's had a, unless it's your absolute be all end all dream, mm-hmm. I would say no. I hear what you're saying, but you're are you also saying too that they should have the education, like maybe a journalism degree? Oh yeah, it can't. You know, put it this way, some places absolutely not. Mm-hmm. But when everything comes push to shove. You have to have things stacked in your favor. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you could just walk. You, you might have the gift to gab. You might have a talent. I'm just telling you what I see. Someone sure. else may disagree with that. Yeah. But I would say, yeah, get get back to school in a hurry. Well, here's a question for you. When we see with YouTube and, and Over 50 TV, you know, we're on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Somebody who is passionate about sports, somebody who's passionate about, you know, athlete, uh, athletics, Launching a YouTube channel, maybe Ooh. going on social media and just, you know, having their own studio, maybe in a spare bedroom. Can't you do a blog? How hard is it to exactly. podcast these days? It's, Podcasts it's fairly are blowing easy up. to do. Yeah, it's Podcasts fairly easy to do. Podcasts are blowing up. Maybe you'll get no. I have some friends, actually, young young men that produce shows in this building. Mm-hmm. They've got a podcast. I'll give it a show. It's called uh, Cleveland Baseball and Brews. Sure. And they do that and they put that together. One never knows. You know. Look at it again. This was decades ago, mm-hmm. but boy, Mike Trivisano, yeah. who's as good as they get. Sure. Here, not, well ben, known ben in Cleveland. He started by calling Pete Franklin. Yeah. He did what? He started, you know, people got to know him by calling Pete Franklin on his show. Oh, wow. And Pete started calling him Mr. Know It All. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, people track that guy down. Let's find him. I bet she'd be good on you know. And Mike has honed his skill. Very few could do what he does. Yeah. And speaking of a legendary broadcaster, he's someone who is so well known here in the Cleveland mm-hmm. area and, and and maybe even nationally. So what he? Oh did, yeah, he is in the top. Actually, I, I want to say, you know, not the, the very bottom. He's in the top 100 of power broker talk radio hosts in the country. Wow, that's a that's an accomplishment. Yeah, so, very much. And, so. and the accomplishment started by him calling into a, a radio right. show. Now, is that going to guarantee you? Absolutely not. Mm-hmm. But he was able to parlay that. So let's also talk about something else too, which is which we we talked about briefly before we started this segment mm-hmm. here. Now, what we're finding is many sports uh, broadcasters are having to get involved in things like sales. And, well, and I, don't say sports. Don't say sports. Sports broadcasters and and not just sales. It's multitasking. Multitasking. People have different jobs. I mentioned somebody may be on TV and mm-hmm. be on radio. Mm-hmm. I was offered a shot uh, to also do sales. Mm-hmm. So you have people involved, you know, maybe IT and things of that nature yeah. with it too. But uh, multitasking is the key these days mm-hmm. to the business, I see. It, it seems like multitasking is the key to just about anything yeah. nowadays. You have to have multiple skills or multi, you may be multi-talented mm-hmm. and do many things. And if you're getting into what we talked about, even getting onto social media with a, a sports show, if that's what you decided to do, you still have to make money, generate revenue. So right. whatever you've got to do, you, you got to do. And you got to remember this too, as a team member. I won't say employee because my company, we've looked at family members, team mm-hmm. members. Sure. There's also something called return on investment. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So if we're paying him or her this much, yeah. they need to bring in this much. So I, I know there's no like set formula. Well, if you're not bringing 10 times a month, that kind of thing, but yeah. you need to generate revenue. It's the yeah. name of the game. Oh, yeah. So, so what we're saying really, the bottom line here is that if you're over 50, and you're looking at getting into, say, something that you're passionate about, what you have to do is maybe not go the traditional way. You have to look at launching a, a YouTube or going on Twitter. Or, I would say that That would one, be your best bet. 100 Here's the thing. It, it, it's, it's a call on you. Mm-hmm. If you're good, have a youthful heart, you know, youthful exuberance. The thing is, if you're over 50, you want to be an intern mm-hmm. for a sports talk radio show. Good point. Good Say, point, hey, Munch. look that up for me. You know, look up the Indians pitching yeah. staff record in 1995 mm-hmm. against now. Mm-hmm. Is that what you want to do? Probably not. Yeah, that's probably what I'm not. saying. Well, I mean, bluntly, probably not. Yeah, and so just having to be honest with you, but who knows with with the podcast, with the you know a blog, mm-hmm. with a kind of a buddy who's retired, just retired, is doing like a baseball blog. Hmm. He does a basketball blog during basketball season, you know, kind of thing. Sure. Which they all overlap now anyway. Yeah. But again, it's, you know. So there's ways to realize It's not a point of no return, but still. Yeah, yeah. It's, no. do you want to do that? 
Yeah, and I and and clearly most people who are watching this or even thinking about a career in sports or even a career just in in radio, terrestrial radio, they would say no. I don't want to be an intern. I don't want to go get coffee for someone, or I don't want to have to look up some data. Right. You know, they want to kind of jump ahead, and it's understandable. I never, asked, I never asked interns to get coffee for me, by the way. No, I asked you to get coffee oh, for me today. Oh, well, I got coffee because I because <laughs> I know you, and uh, uh, getting coffee for a Hall of Fame broadcaster is always you. a treat for me. Listen, Munch, thank you so much. Well, it's for, my pleasure, for man. Joining us today, and, and I don't give up the dream. That's one thing, though. You know, if you have a dream, there's various ways to go at it. And, you know, so many people will say, "Plus, here's the thing, too." is that if you have a job, good chance that you're getting your bills paid. Yeah. All right? Yeah. So continue paying your bills. Do a podcast. Do a blog. Do something of that nature. Do YouTube. Mm -hmm. And go from there. Sure. And have some fun doing it. Great advice, Munch. Thank you so much. My pleasure, Again, bro. thank you, buddy. Thanks. Thank you. Good people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching this episode of Over 50 TV. I'm here with the uh, Hall of Fame broadcaster, Mark Munch Bishop. Had a great time with you, Thanks, Munch. Ben. Thanks again. And please subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Have a great day, everybody.